Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be getting our pathfinding code to run on a separate thread so that the game never freezes up when we're searching for a path. We'll start in the path request manager script. In here, I'll start by deleting all of the stuff that we're no longer going to need, so the current path request and the path request queue, as well as is processing path and the entire try process next method. Then the bodies of request path and finished processing path are going to be completely changed. So uh, let's delete all of that in there. And now the request path method, instead of taking in all of these different parameters, we're going to simplify it to just take in a single path request struct called our request. Now, if a unit wants to request a path, it will of course have to create a path request. So we'll need to move this struct outside of the class so that it can be accessed from elsewhere. So let's save that and go into the unit script. And now when we request a path, we can say new path request and pass in all of this stuff. And we need to do that again over here. New path request and pass in all of that. All right, let's save and go back to the path request manager. So in here, we'll want to start a new thread. So up at the top, let's add using system.threading so that we can create a thread start variable, which we can just call thread start and set this equal to delegate, open curly brackets. And in here, we need to put the method that we want to call on the new thread. So that will be instance.pathfinding.findpath. Currently, findpath is a uh, private coroutine in the pathfinding class, but we'll change that in just a bit. This will take in a request, and it will also take in a callback for the finish processing path method. So let's pass that in there. All right, add a semicolon here, and then we can start the thread by saying thread start dot invoke. All right, now when the finish processing path method is called, we'll want to return the result to whoever requested the path. So we're going to need this callback in order to do that. So as an additional parameter here, let's take in path request original request. All right, so now we can access the callback, but what we must be careful of is since the find path method is running on a separate thread and it calls the finish processing path method from that thread, that means that this method will be running on the separate thread as well. And if we simply say something like original request dot callback and pass in the path and the success pool, now suddenly our units on path found method will be running on that separate thread as well and that will cause all sorts of problems so we need to get back onto the main thread before we make this callback so what we can do is add all of this relevant information that is the callback the path and the success pool to a queue that we'll define up at the top of the class and then inside of the update method, which of course is running on the main thread, we can then get that stuff out of the queue and use it to make the callback. Now, in order to do this, we'll need to be able to store all of this information inside of a single variable. So let's create a struct, which I'll call path result. And this will have a public vector three array for the path public bool for the success, and finally, the same callback from the path request here. All right, we then want to make a constructor, so just command I, and select these three members that we want to be initialized. And then, up at the top here, let's create our queue. So queue of type path result, I'll just call this results is equal to a new queue of path results. And then in here, we can say path result result is equal to a new 
path result with path, success, and original request dot callback. We then want to add the result to the queue. So we say results dot nq, and we add our item. So that's the result. Now, what we have to be careful of is if multiple threads are running this method simultaneously, and at the same time, they all try to uh, enqueue the result, then we can get some strange behavior. So to avoid this, we first want to lock the results queue so that only one thread can access it at a time. So we say lock results and then open and close curly brackets. All right, now let's create our update method. Void update. And in here we'll say if there are items in the results queue, so if the count is greater than zero, then we'll say items in queue is equal to results.count and then we can lock the queue, so lock results, and now we'll say for int i equals zero, i less than items in queue, i plus plus, we'll get path result result is equal to results dot dq, and then we say result dot callback, and we pass in result dot path, and result dot success as the two arguments. All right, so now that we have this path result struct, it might actually be cleaner if our finish processing path method doesn't take in all these different parameters, but rather just a single path result variable called the result. So we no longer need to create that here because that will now be created inside of the pathfinding class. So we will need to make the path result struct accessible to the pathfinding class. So let's just cut that and paste it outside of the path request manager class. While we're here, we should make both of these structs public. So public struct path result and public struct path request. We can then save this and head over to the pathfinding script. And in here, we're going to delete the start find path method because we're going to be calling find path directly. So this is no longer going to be a coroutine. It's just going to be a public void. And its parameters have changed. So instead, we take in a path request, call that the request, and it also takes in a callback. So action. And the one parameter is the path result. You can call this callback. Now to get our start position and target position, we just use request.pathstart and request.pathend. Then coming down to the bottom here, we of course no longer want to yield return null because this is not a coroutine anymore. And instead of calling finished processing path directly, we use our callback and we pass in a new path result with our parameters being the waypoints, the success bool, and our request dot callback. Okay, so since we're now using this callback, we can get rid of our reference to the path request manager up here, as well as the get component call in the awake method. And then let's save that and go into Unity. Looks like we have an error. An object reference is required to access non-static member finished processing path. So in this static method, I've passed in this uh, non-static member as it refers to it. So we've got to add instance dot, and then that should work fine. All right, let's run this to make sure that the pathfinding still works. And let's quickly try it with multiple seeker objects just to make sure that nothing strange happens. 
All right, that all seems to be working correctly. Now, one thing that was pointed out last video is that if I take this target object and move it a very small amount, you can sometimes get this index out of range exception. And what's happening here is that when we call retrace path, we're getting a waypoints array back that has nothing in it. So what we'll say here is that path success equals waypoints dot length greater than zero. So if there are zero elements in the waypoints array, then path success will be set to false. You can save that now, and that problem should be gone. So that is everything for this episode. Until next time, cheers.